Almost two years ago now, I put out a video titled, Why Does Your Mom Love Alternative Medicine? I was extremely proud of it because of how much research it required and how well I felt it covered a subject that was very important to me personally. Others seemed to like it too because I got several personal emails thanking me for shedding light on a subject that troubled them. Then, tragically, a certain natural mom of YouTube hit the video with a false copyright strike for a five-second clip that was clearly covered under fair use. I couldn't pay any legal fees to fight it, so the video actually got entirely deleted. So, recently I decided that to celebrate 200,000 subscribers, thank you guys by the way, I would stick it to those who like to suppress good information on medical care by recreating the video and sharing it with a much larger audience than it originally enjoyed. I hope you all like the video as much as I enjoy the fact that our false copyright claimant's plan ultimately backfired. Hi, are you a human being that's ever been on the internet? If so, chances are that you've come across a mom online that just loves alternative medicine. They might call themselves a natural mom, a crunchy mom, a holistic mom, or an independent distributor of amazing natural products that you've just got to hear about. Plenty of different demographics love alternative medicine, but it seems that moms have a particular affinity for it. In fact, the majority of alternative medicine users are women, and women of childbearing age make up the majority of that demographic. If you're like me, you might wonder if seeing a trend of alt-med moms is just a result of your own bias, but statistically, this does seem to be a real significant trend. But why is this a thing? Why do moms love alternative medicine? I think all of us have our own ideas, but there is some relevant research that we can use to gain more objective insight into this trend. There are two important things to remember as we get into this. One, the majority of alternative medicine users are women, so if we're referring to research done on alternative medicine users in general, we are talking about populations of mostly women. And when we're talking about parents, we're talking about mostly mothers. Two, we're talking about the really crunchy stuff here, the stuff that's not evidence-based. When we say alternative medicine, we're talking about treatments that are not accepted by the larger medical community. As we get into the research, I must admit that before reading up on this, I held to a common misconception about why most people use alt-med. That misconception is that people are dissatisfied with conventional medical care, so they seek alternatives. What research actually shows is that people use alt-med primarily because it fits with their personal philosophy. It treats the whole person, as participants in one study overwhelmingly said. How exactly does it fit with their personal philosophies? Well, further research helps us understand this. Multiple studies show that the personal philosophy alternative medicine appeals to is a kind of do-it-yourself attitude. It allows users to personally engage in the health care of themselves or their children to a greater degree than only going to the doctor. This is accomplished in a couple of ways. Most alternative remedies can be used at home, so you can use them whenever is convenient. Most importantly though, Alt-Med just provides the perception of additional options for treatment. To quote a 2010 article in the Journal of Pediatrics and Child Health, the use of complementary and alternative medicine was attractive as it offered more options in healthcare than just relying on conventional medicine alone. The use of additional therapies was seen as a means to increase the likelihood that something would work. Moms, of all people, have an excellent reason to be extraordinarily proactive in seeking health care, that being the health of their children. With such a responsibility as the health of a child, it makes sense that they'd be driven to seek out any and all treatment options. Okay, so we get that most people use Alt-Med because it supposedly provides additional options, but there's a question more basic than that, and I think it's the one that we're all ultimately curious about. Why do moms think alternative medicine actually works? Unsurprisingly, the most common reasons people give when surveyed have nothing to do with knowledge of any research in support of its use. The study I quoted a moment ago addresses this question. Apparently, when asked about determining the best treatment options for their children, participants said that they believe they should trust their instincts as parents in caring for their child, and that parents discussed a range of theories of health and illness as in ideas about illness not accepted by doctors. I mean, I can understand the sentiment, but trusting one's own instincts over the advice of a highly educated medical doctor is probably unwise. The phrase mother knows best is not always to be taken literally, but apparently some people do take it that way. It should go without saying that parental intuition is no substitute for a medical degree, a perspective informed by centuries of medical science and countless hours of study and practice beats a gut feeling every single time. If it didn't, doctors wouldn't be needed because parents' intuition would just keep us all healthy. 
Perhaps the most common reason for holding a high opinion of alternative medicine that parents cite when surveyed is that they prefer natural treatment. A literature review published in the European Journal of Pediatrics stated that most parents who choose complementary and alternative medicine for their children believe that these therapies are natural and thus safe. Alternative medicine is based primarily in nature. It's often plant-based or involves simple bodily manipulations and exercises. Countless supplement and health food companies advertise their products as all natural because it's well known to draw people in. Naturalness is intuitively appealing to most people. Why this is may be up for discussion, but the fact that the phenomenon exists is so well established that it's actually recognized as its own cognitive bias, naturalness bias. Of course, just because something is natural doesn't mean that it's safe, effective, or without side effects. Arsenic and cyanide do occur naturally, and they're better off left alone. So to recap, a desire to utilize any and all treatment methods at one's disposal, placing a disproportionate amount of trust in one's own instincts, and succumbing to a common cognitive bias accounts for why a huge number of moms use alternative medicine. That's what the literature seems to indicate, at least. Now that we've gone over the dry stuff, allow me to take you through how a lot of moms specifically are drawn into the world of alt-med. This is the really interesting stuff. Moms are a high spending demographic, especially when it comes to food and health products. They're also, like I said, often motivated in seeking out new and unique ways of improving their family's health. No one knows this better than advertisers. They take full advantage of this to their financial gain. Chances are, if you've seen just a few episodes of Oprah, you've probably seen what I'm talking about. Shameless sales pitches to Oprah's audience of mostly moms are commonplace and are often made the climax of the show. If you've ever seen ads for alternative medicine multi-level marketing schemes like Herbalife or Kayani, you'll know that they emphasize the uses moms can make of their products. Women's and parenting magazines are go-to sources for home remedies for common ailments. And naturalnews.com is loaded with quack cures for parents to take advantage of, using products from Natural News' own store, of course. Advertisers know moms not only see products being promoted through various forms of media, but also fully expect them to attempt to research health-related topics online. Depending on where you are in the world, you can search online for information about vaccines, organic food, GMOs, supplements, and the like, and have pseudoscience dominate your search results. Top results are often sponsored by companies in the supplement industry. These companies target moms especially in the promotion of misinformation on vaccines, diet aids, and basically any children's health issue. It's easy to find misinformation online, much of which promotes alt-med use, especially when you're a concerned parent. Unfortunately, a common theme across most forms of advertising for alt-med is a promotion of fear. I mean, being a parent is scary because you care so deeply for your child's well-being. Companies in the alternative health scene take advantage of that. While it's not an ad for alternative medicine, I think a fairly recent ad from Stonyfield for organic non-GMO yogurt perfectly demonstrates the fear-mongering tactics of the industry which are directed at mothers. That sounds monstrous. And they take a gene from a fish and they put it into the tomato. Are you kidding me? Yeah, I think it's better if we get informed of it before we, like, eat it. Finally, moms just talk. Parents need social support, and that's readily found in countless natural parenting groups, especially online. Even if, as a mom, you're not particularly interested in alternative medicine, you will inevitably be exposed to moms who are. If you're as scientifically literate as the average American, which is to say not very, it's easy to become convinced of Altmed's efficacy by mere exposure. The testimony of a friend is hugely influential, and if you tend to be convinced by personal experience rather than by reliable scientific research, you'll likely fall in line with those surrounding you. If nothing else, the popularity of alt-med in parenting groups is prevalent enough to foster an uncomfortable amount of peer pressure if you don't fall in line. Even after hearing all of this, I know what you're probably thinking. Drew, you hardly look old enough to be a mother, so why are you the person that's preaching to us on this? I hear you, and that's why I have Britt Marie Hermes, a former naturopath turned science communicator, here to give her thoughts on the subject. Hey Britt, thanks for coming on. Uh, I was wondering if you could tell me in your own words, why do you think moms love alternative medicine? Well, moms love their children, of course, and naturopaths and practitioners of alternative medicine frequently promise easy cures without side effects. And this is very appealing for 
a mom or really any loving parent who wants to offer their child the best chance of being as healthy as possible, living their best life as possible, and sort of um, maximizing or optimizing their health, which are sort of these, you know, bogus marketing terms that these alternative practitioners throw around. I should know. I practiced, of course, as a naturopathic practitioner for a long time, and these were sort of the buzzwords that I used to um, hook parents into whatever it was that I was selling. As you can probably guess, uh, I'm, I'm not a mother, so I'm hoping that you can answer this question. How do you think that we can promote scientific literacy and critical thinking skills in moms specifically? Well, I think... The, the message needs to be packaged just as beautifully and just as um, with as much appeal as any alternative medicine package. So that means that we need to focus on using language that is easy for the parent to understand. We need to focus on the positive aspects of the science-based uh, medicine that is being delivered to the child. We need to talk to parents as if we already know that they want the best for their child and that we understand that a lot of what comes with the practice of medicine are some scary unknowns and acknowledging that first and foremost for the parent and also acknowledging that, that of course, they want to give their child the best the best of anything in any circumstance and make the science-based medicine in that scenario as appealing as possible and really take the time to educate the parent about the dangers of the alternative medicine and to and to empathize with that parent about why it is that they might be leaning towards or attracted to something that is um, outside of conventional medical care. If a mom you know approached you and asked you for advice on medical care for their children, what would you say to them? Now, like if a mom came to me this afternoon and asked, I would say to stay as far away from alternative medicine as possible. I don't see any good reason to, el to pursue alternative care. No reason at all. Not for nutrition reasons, not for uh, lifestyle reasons, not for anything. If that mom, that parent is interested in knowing more about um, how to feed their child better or is interested in foods for a medical condition, well, there are registered dietitians who are well-versed and have science-based educations to help uh, teach and train a parent, you know, these, these types of techniques. If the mom is looking for lifestyle information, well, any good pediatrician or primary care doctor can talk about meal hygiene, sleep hygiene, um, you know, limiting screen time, increasing exercise, et cetera. So I don't, I, I honestly, not for the life of me, can think of a single reason why a parent should step into an alternative practitioner's office with their child. Thanks again for coming on and helping me out here. Uh, can you tell my audience where they can find you online? Right. So I write about my experiences as a former naturopath at my blog, which is naturopathicdiaries.com. And you can follow me on Twitter at naturodiaries. Thanks for watching. I've been Drew of Genetically Modified Skeptic. As always, go ahead and subscribe. Check out my Patreon. Follow me on Twitter and Facebook at GM Skeptic. Join my Discord. And until next time, stay skeptical.